the fence that had been padlocked shut. To the surge of the crowd, it's managed to shove those padlocked gates open. Hi everybody, little Scotty here. Um, hold on, let me turn down the news. Why I'm watching the news at 6 o'clock in the morning, I don't know. But So, we're going to go over the long axis view of the right ventricle. This is a view that not a lot of, uh, not, I shouldn't say not a lot of, but occasionally gets overlooked in uh, especially smaller hospitals. Um, unfortunately... Uh, doctors are like mechanics. There are good ones and there are bad ones. Um, someone who is very up and knows what they're doing when reading an echo will demand this view because it's a very good view to sample tricuspid regurg or tricuspid insufficiency. So um, I wanted to just go over with you. Now the best way I can explain this is if you have the transducer in the long axis view and you're getting the view of the aorta and the L LV and LA and and uh, everything looks good, what you want to do is tilt the transducer so that the top of the transducer where the wire comes out is tilted more towards the left shoulder. And the bottom of the transducer will then tilt a little bit more to the right hip. So if you can imagine moving the transducer that way, it's hard for me to explain on a stagnant screen if I could do it with you know some sort of film would be great but I'm not that talented so um, it's actually amazing that I was able to figure this out so um, but anyways in this view you can obviously see you know here's the right ventricle let me change the color so you can see it a little bit better the right ventricle is is basically this whole structure here now remember there's a lot of trabeculations down here in the RV that's Sometimes the RV is referred to as the trabeculated chamber um, or pumping chamber. Um, I've seen that before in books and other things, uh, especially from the UK and a few other places. Um, and then you have the posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the, I'm sorry, the anterior leaflet is here, the first one I drew, and the posterior leaflet is here. Um, those are the two leaflets that you see. Um, don't hold me to that. I could be wrong. It's been a while. Um, and then obviously the RA is here. So we got right atrium, right ventricle, tricuspid valve that got written out here. You can see the little arrow. And one of the reasons why this is a good view to sample the amount of tricuspid regurg is because when your continuous wave pops up you can run it right through the tricuspid valve when it closes. And that'll give you a real good sample volume of how fast the tricuspid regurg is going. You know, is it 3 meters per second? Is it 4 meters per second? You know, the higher it goes, the higher the pressure is. So, you know, you want to make sure that you get a good sample of that. Now, this is not going to be a long video because there's not a lot to show in this, but I got a couple more pictures, so... Okay, here's another view. Um, same kind of concept. We've got the uh, RA down here. This is the tricuspid valve and the RV up here. This is the interventricular septum. It's actually the bottom of the interventricular septum. Um, and uh, let me think, is it bottom or top? Hold on a second. I guess it would be more mid-range. So, um, but you can see it there. That's why I pointed it out. Um, like I said, don't hold me to everything. I, I do my best, but uh, I've been retired for about two and a half years, and I haven't done an echo in that long. So, um, although I did them for 30 years before then, uh, still pretty good at this. So, um, this picture is a little bit clearer, and it shows the tricuspid valve in an open position. So, what you would see, you know, red flow coming through here. And um, the red flow itself would be, you know, coming through like that and going into the right ventricle. And then when the valve closes, obviously that's systole, and then you would see your um, regurgitation if there is any coming back this way. 
So it's a good view. Um, it's a great view to sample the tricuspid regurge because sometimes the regurge will go, you know, straight towards the atrial septum or it'll go a little bit over. You know, obviously, I don't know if you've learned this in the school you went to, but you want to be at no more, I'm sorry, that was supposed to be a circle, about a 16 degree angle. So the further out you get, the worse the anger, angle is, and the less accurate the Doppler signal will be. So try to remember that when you're sampling. You want to be as parallel to flow as you can be at all times. It's very, very important because you want an accurate sample volume, and you don't want to screw that up because it can mean the difference between moderate to severe right, you know, uh, right ventricular pressures and uh, tricuspid regurge. It, it can mean a lot, so try to be as parallel to flow as you can. Okay, now here's a shot with color flow, and you can see what I described in the last frame is the uh, regurgitation here. You can draw it in blue so you can see it, just like it would appear on the uh, on the um, echo itself, and then the inflow of the RV. Um, so you see that there, the red. And uh, this is where you want to run your sample volume down through here and determine the you know pressures and you can also determine the velocity. Um, remember, almost nine times out of ten, um, this veloc velocity is going to be right around um, like three point you know zero is pretty normal, but it is what we see most of is about right around three. Um, you need the continuous wave to sample that. So there's really no reason to sample with a pulsed wave Doppler all the way through here. It's, it's just unnecessary. Um, so I would go right to the continuous wave. Now there are some doctors who believe that you should sample with both all the time. It's a waste of time. Um, it's, you know, if you know the velocity is going to be over 3 meters per second, the pulse wave will not cover that. So anything you put on the screen is going to be inaccurate because you're going to have to use what's called HP. I can't remember what it's called. HP, uh, I don't remember, but it's a high-frequency pulsed wave. That's what it is. And uh, the high-frequency pulse wave, it loses its accuracy once it goes over about 2.8 and uh, it's just not as accurate. So use the continuous wave, get your velocity, and then go from there. Okay, I just thought I'd draw a picture of the RV in the long axis view. Again, when you have your sample volume, you can run it pretty parallel to the flow going through the valve and sample it there. Um, it's, a, it's an important view. It's something that should be added to every echo to make sure you get good velocities in the tricuspid valve. Remember, in a long axis view, you know, if I were to draw a quick long axis, or I'm sorry, four chamber view, um, a lot of times, sometimes the pen doesn't work, a lot of times what happens is the uh, velocity, oh come on, give me a break, <laughs> the velocity itself of the tricuspid valve regurge because your sample volume starts at the top of the screen comes in at quite an angle so it may not be as accurate as if you were coming through like this that's parallel to flow so like I said the more parallel to flow you are the more ideal it is you're not always going to be parallel to flow but the closer you are to it the better all right I just wanted to make this short video just to make things um, you know, a little bit easier to explain to you. Wow, a lot of things to erase. Um, and hopefully you'll be using some of this as time goes on to, you know, get good echoes, and especially now that we've covered the long axis, I'll get into the short axis in the next video. Have a good day.